Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 81 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. This is part three of our mini series where we are talking about image segmentation using traditional machine learning. So I hope you watched parts one and two, which were videos 79 and 80. In 79, we talked about using a single image and a mask to train a random forest and creating a model. And in the last tutorial, which was video 80 or tutorial 80, we used that trained model to segment a whole bunch of images. And we realized that, okay, Okay, the images look semi-decent, but maybe we need more training data. So in this tutorial, let's use multiple images and corresponding masks to train a model. And typically, if you're working with, uh, for example, 3D images, like uh, a Z-Stack, for example, I uh, usually pick uh, one image from the top, one somewhere in the middle, one somewhere towards the end. So they represent different areas of this volume or different regions of this volume for the training process. So the goal is to, instead of taking one image uh, for training and one corresponding mask, we are going to take a few images, maybe 10 images for training and 10 masks, corresponding masks, and the process would be the same. For each of this, we're going to extract Gabor, Gaussian, Median, Sobel, and all of these, and then uh, attach them into a data frame, capture this information in a data frame, and then train a random forest uh, uh, for, uh, for future prediction. So that's the plan. And uh, again, please go to www.appear.com to label your images. In this example, I took a image stack of 10 images, as you'll see, image number one, image number, I mean, slice number one, slice number two, slice number three. Basically, I took 10 images from the volume and created a TIFF stack, so it's easy for me to kind of label these, and I exported all the labels. And uh, for this example, I'm not going to show you TIFF stack, but I'm going to show you an example where I have train images, 10 of these, like I just showed you and uh, train masks, the corresponding masks, 10 of them. This is directly downloaded from here, except I uh, save this TIFF stack as individual TIFF images. You can just use a TIFF stack and engineer your code to work with TIFF stacks. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's get in to understand this a bit more. Okay, so this is our spider IDE that I use for Python. And this is our video, uh, I mean the code from our video 79, which was take a single training image and a single corresponding mask to train a model. So what have we done here? From this training image, we converted that into a grayscale image and then we created a data frame, empty data frame, and added the pixel values as one of the features and we called it original image. And then we extracted 32 Gabor filters uh, and then, I mean, created 32 Gabor filters and applied that onto the image to get 32 responses. And we added that to the data frame. In addition to that, we also added a few of these other as features. And then we added another column to capture our labels. And finally, we separated these into X and Y, X being all the features and Y being the labels that we're trying to predict. And we are fitting that to a random forest classifier and saving the uh, file as a pickle dump. And then we can load it to do our predictions. Let's extend this to multiple images. As you can imagine, all we have to do is put this into a for loop and then read one image at a time and do exactly the same exercise. There are multiple ways of doing this. Again, create your own uh, uh, function, for example. I think uh, that's also a valid way. You know, Create a function for this entire process and then apply that function to different image. So it's up to you how you design it, but let's go through how I have done this for this demonstration purposes. So. Uh, outside of this for loop, I created an empty data frame. I called it image data set. This is where all of the information is going to be captured for the image. And I'll create another data frame called mask data set and I'll capture all the information for mask. Okay, remember our images are in a folder called train images and masks in a folder called train mask appear. Okay. So, which means I have to define the path of my images and then use either glob or os.listdir. You've hopefully watched those videos uh, in my channel, in this channel. So for each image in this folder, first of all, let's go ahead and print the name. Okay, so let's run these 
lines of code so you can see what we are talking about. So it's actually looking at 0, 50, 100, 150. So these are all the images and these should be the ones that we have in our train, right? All it's doing is uh, printing out the file names, which means the next line is cv2.imread, that individual file. And then I added a couple of lines here just to make sure that the images that we are reading are compliant. In this case, these are individual 2D images. So I want to make sure I check my dimensions right there. If the dimensions are more than this, that means these are like OMETIF for TIFF stacks or something. So I want it to throw an exception saying that, hey, the module only works with grayscale and RGB images. If you really want to uh, work on TIFF stacks, again, please design this the way uh, you know, it's it's compatible with your type of image format. Okay, so that's this step. And the next step is uh, reshaping our input image, exactly same as what we have done here, right? I mean, we create an empty data frame in the first tutorial, and then we are reshaping our image and then capturing that uh, pixel values. And then we do Gabor. So let me get back to my tutorial right here. We are reshaping it and uh, adding it to our data frame uh, uh, right there. Now you see that there is one data frame outside where I add everything to, and then there is a dummy data, uh, data frame inside. Well, not dummy, but a temporary data frame inside this for loop to capture all the information about a single image. And then I append that to the image data set and then reset this one more time. So I hope this actually makes sense to you. So again, all I'm doing is read an image add the column to our data frame with our pixel values, and then extract our Gabor filters, and then do exactly the same process as before. Same Canny filter, same Roberts. At the end of it, I'm basically adding a column to the data frame. And eventually, as you may imagine, we'll have a data frame that has uh, how many of our columns that we have created. And all of that, I'm going to append to my image data set. And after that, it goes back, because this is a for loop, it goes back here and resets the data frame and adds this information again. For each image, it's going to do this. And since we are using append down here, these are going to be new rows added to the data frame for each image which means it does make sense to actually capture the image name, which I hope I'm doing somewhere at the beginning right there. So I'm also adding the image name just to make sure, okay, for this image, these are all the features. For this image, all the features. So my image and mask can be easily matched if I want. You know, if you really want to be careful, one of the recommendations I have is force the image name and mask name to be exactly the same so you can compare those or at least begin with the same so you can compare oh is this the right image or not i'm not doing that but that's just a recommendation for you okay so after that my image is done now let's read the masks okay so i create an empty mask uh, data frame and i'm reading my mask one at a time just like we do our uh, just like we do our uh, images and then I'm going to uh, create a dummy data frame or empty, you know, a, a placeholder data frame within this loop, just like before for each mask. And for mask, the only thing that we need is the pixel values, right? Or the label values. So that's exactly what we are capturing and also the mask name and we have a mask data set. So after this step, we should have, uh, in fact, let's go ahead and run it. Let's do this, all of this up to this point. So let's run this. And on the right hand side, you should see that, okay, let me expand it. It's going from Gabor 1 through 32, Gabor 1 through 32 for each of these images, and it should do it 10 different times. And this should be relatively fast, okay? And after these 10 images, it will do all the masks. And uh, eventually we should see a uh, two data frames, one for image and one for mask. So let me resize this. And let's give it, there you go, so it's all done. And now if I, if we look up here, we should see image data set with a whole bunch of, I don't even dare to open that, but 42 columns. So this is, if you remember this, previously we had uh, about uh, 10 million, 19,904. Now we have, uh, you know, uh, whatever, 
uh, one zero, you know, we have an extra zero over there, which means we have 10 images of that size, basically, and then 42 columns. And columns are pixel values, image name, and Gabor, and so on. So all of these columns. So similarly, we have a mask data set, corresponding mask data set right there, okay? Uh, so instead of, again, uh, instead of 10 million, now you have 101 million, 99,040, right? So that many. So 10 times more than individual image. But everything else is pretty much the same. So all we have done is concatenated or appended the data from each image. That's pretty much it. Uh, the rest of the step should be very intuitive. Again, if you watched our previous tutorial. One, I'm merging both of these data sets into one single data set. Called, uh, by using the concatenation. Again, we covered this part in uh, Pandas tutorials. So pd.concat, so image data set and mask data set along axis equals to one. So it puts this as a new column on the uh, to this original data set. So let's go ahead and do that. So now if you look at our data set up here, it's got again our 101,099,040 data rows and 44 columns because we added these two columns uh, uh, you know, from our mask data set to our original data set, our image data set. Okay, next step, drop all the values with zero. So this will tremendously come down. So if I draw all the pixel, uh, drop all the pixel values corresponding to a value of zero, now we only have 372,000 uh, pixels. That means I patiently labeled 372,000 pixels here. Every other pixel where we have no information, no label, we are dropping them because that's that doesn't, I mean, a pixel value of zero has nothing, no meaning for us when it comes to our training. Okay, so that's the part and then uh, pretty much the same, our X, what is our X? These are the features. So our features are every column except for the image name, mask name and label values. Image name, mask name mean nothing. In fact, this is where you probably should somewhere put if image name equals to mask name, then proceed. If not, raise an exception saying, hey, the masks, these two are not the same. Please go back and check. I haven't done that, but that's a good exercise to do. So we're dropping these two. We are also dropping label value because label value is not something you model. Label value is something you're trying to predict. Okay, so that is our Y value. So we're dropping that. So this is our X and our Y is like I just said, our label values, and this is our Y. And we are encoding the labels. Again, I mentioned why we do this in uh, uh, two tutorials ago. We're doing this so some of the statistics are easy to calculate. Instead of labels being, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, these will be zero, one, two, three, okay? And instead of labels being A, B, C, D, this will be zero, one, two, three. So no matter what the labels are, after you encode it, it would be zero, one, two, three, okay? That's the whole point of label encoder. And then we are splitting the data into training and testing data sets uh, using our, uh, uh, using our uh, scikit-learns model selection. And we are all set. Now let's go ahead and train it. So the whole point of this video is the first part, using a for loop, adding data to your pandas data frame. If you're already good at pandas, then you probably knew what I was going to do anyhow, but reinforcement is always a good, good, good idea. So once that is done, let's go ahead and check the accuracy and then print, uh, uh, check the ROC AUC curve. So let me pause this video since we have uh, quite a few data points. This may take a few more seconds. So let's pause the video for now. Okay, so that took extra 20 seconds, but uh, it is done now. Now let's go ahead and check our accuracy. So uh, the way we are doing our accuracy is uh, we are predicting on our X test values, remember, we split our data into, if I can find it, we split our data into X train, X test, and Y train, and Y test. So I'm predicting this on X test values and comparing the output to Y test because Y test is the ground truth anyhow. So that's exactly what we are doing here. So let us uh, run these lines and see what the accuracy is coming up to be. So the accuracy is 95.25%, which is which is uh, not bad actually for something like this. And uh, let's uh, print the unique values. Yeah, I added this just to make sure because sometimes I'm just adding uh, np.unique y, like when we predict this, I just want to make sure what values we have for labels. We have zero, one, two, three, which is good. 
So these are the values, which means for my ROC AUC curve, I'm going to just use the classes 0, 1, 2, 3, and then print out the ROC AUC curve. I, again, do not want to explain ROC AUC as part of this video, which I'll, I'll create another video for that. But if you look at this, ROC AUC curve is, again, this line stands for random guess. So if you randomly guess what the pixel belongs to, either 0, 1, 2, uh, or 3, then uh, it falls into this line, right? So which is every each one of these has 25% of chance to fall into one of these uh, categories. But uh, the more farther you are from this line, the better the model is. So uh, the perfect model is like, okay, right there, going up there and, uh, uh, you know, in a horizontal way. But this is very, very, very good model, as you can see. Okay, now this is only useful if you're comparing like different parameters of the same model or different models, for example. In this case, I'm just having a quick look as a sanity check. I'll include this code. Again, I'll share the code so you can uh, you can test it out. So finally, let's go ahead and save the model and dump it as a new name, sandstone model multi image. And now let's go back to the code from our part two, except instead of this model, let's actually use the new model that we just created and then segment the images. So let's do one thing. So we can compare the results. Let's delete the previous ones and let's just call this old versa 15 or something, old 0015, so we can compare it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this and image 15. So let's have a quick look at the results for image 15 and test images. This is the ground truth. And uh, let's look at segmented images. This is the result we got from the last time. Uh, adjust. And our values go from 0 to 3. So let's do that. And the result that we get from this time is right there. And let's do the same. Set 0 to 15. Oh, sorry, not 0 to 15, 0 to 3. Okay, let's compare. And this is the original image. Okay, so you can see that this is the one on the right hand side is with multiple labels where we have a lot more labels. And as you can see, this is much more accurate than the one that we got with fewer labels, especially look at the edges and this area is pretty clear. You see right here, this is not supposed to be the bright region. This one is actually doing a good job. In fact, look at the three dots right there that correspond to these three bright regions right here. So this model, in fact, is doing very, very, very good. So if I move this up here so we can have a very nice look, this is actually doing a excellent job with all of the classes that we are trying to predict here. Okay, so I hope again you learned uh, something useful. And in the next video, I'll show you how to do all of this without doing any coding. Well, not in Python, but on Appear. So if you really have some uh, images that you would like to segment, then let's, uh, I mean, this, this is probably, a, uh, this is going to be very helpful. So please stay tuned for the next video uh, where we'll look at how to do this type of segmentation on Appear using the modules on Appear itself. Until then, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.